This video experiment from a German research institute visually demonstrates how far and fast air particles travel when someone breathes, coughs, coughs into their hand, coughs into their sleeve, coughs into a dust mask, and finally coughs into a surgical mask. So why has mandatory mask wearing not been adopted in Australia throughout the crisis? Initially, one of the biggest drivers, I guess one was the uncertainty of um, how masks worked in a community setting. And the other driver was, of course, we didn't think we had enough masks for the frontline health workers that needed masks. So, um, you know, a lot has changed in six months um, and we've learned a whole lot more about the virus. A recent global review of the effectiveness of face masks published in the Lancet Medical Journal found wearing a face mask could reduce the risk of infection by up to 85%. But even in Victoria hotspots, the official advice remains that people only need to wear a mask if they are sick with COVID-19 symptoms or if looking after someone who may have COVID-19. It's sort of a complicated issue. In general, in Australia at the moment, we don't think um, there's probably much benefit in wearing one. Um, but um, in other countries, um, in the United States, for example, I can see exactly why. Uh, they think that's a probably a really important thing to do. Um, there's also the issue that um, people have to use it correctly. Australian experts have raised the concern that a push for wearing face masks distracts away from the main message of reducing contact with other people. This has led to the advice remaining in place that masks are only necessary where social distancing practices are not possible. Now, I'm not suggesting that everybody outside of Victoria or Melbourne wear a mask except in public transport where you can't keep your distance and definitely in an aeroplane. We need to send the message that we don't expect you to wear them in the street because mostly being outside isn't an amplification opportunity.